G'day. In today's video I make up a, a spiral uh, clamp for um, holding things down as, as most people who get into milling uh, become. I, I get a bit uh, interested in, in different ways of holding things and I've seen these around the place. Um, the picture I'll just put up now is from uh, a company called AMF. Uh, and they, they still make these. Uh, however, one of these will cost close to $200 Australian dollars. Uh, I'm not even sure what they're available in country. So uh, in the spirit of, well, let's see what we can do, uh, I made a couple. And so there's a bit of uh, helical milling as well as a bit of indexing on the, uh, the dividing head and uh, all that sort of stuff. So um, hang around and see how they're made. And uh, at the end of it, I explain uh, why you might want these things rather than a, than a normal strap clamp. The start of the basis of these cup shaped things, um, they're just a bit of bar stock that I've taken to length, bored out the middle, uh, leaving myself about an 8mm thick um, base there. I put a counter bore in there on the thought that I might be able to use that for, for jacking these things up, but we'll have to see how that works. Um, I then set up in the, uh, in the bandsaw here and cut, came down and cut part way through, and now I'm using my V block technique to come down and cut the vertical. And I'll just have to neat that out with a hacksaw. Some of you may recognize this plate. It was used in the uh, engraving of the, the Taylor Taylor Hobson um, table. And then I used it again for another bit of engraving. And now I'm using it again to, as, a, as a fixture. One of the, the toughest things I had to get the hang of when I was started out doing machining was that sometimes you need to actually use some material to make something other than what you're, you're actually trying to make. And so this is a case of that. Uh, and I was lucky I was able to recycle this. So what I've done is I've, if you recall, I turned a, 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 a register on the inside here. And so I've turned the, the matching register on there. I've got a hole in the middle here and that was, that was pre-existing, but that's, um, uh, 3 8 uh, 16 TPI in there, so that's good uh, because that's the hole that that's designed for and that'll fit on like so and I can clamp that down. Now to actually make that a little bit more secure I'm going to put a small hole in there and put a pin in and on the bottom of these I'm going to put a, um, a pin in as well and that'll just give me a bit of a register so that I don't have it have it rotating on me. All I'm going to do is be trimming that off on the bandsaw to um, get myself close so that I'm not chomping away large bits of material on the on the mill and then uh, I get to set this up to put the teeth in. This is how I trimmed the ends. I had a bit of pipe, put the two, two um, pieces in there with a, with a um, piece out of my uh, strap clamp kit uh, and just clamped them up and cut them. Now that's just, that was a straight cut about 42 degrees I think and you can see here um, there's a black line uh, and that was from the the, the, the template. So there's a, that's a straight triangle and then when you wrap it it turns into a sign. And so you can see here I've got lots of clearance here I'm, I'm just right down on the line or almost right down the line. Uh, I think yes this end here is, is uh, even worse. Um, the saving grace there is that the cuts are going to be coming out radially and so while that bit's low, this bit here is, is high. The next thing I need to do is pop this up into the, um, the mill, into the dividing head, uh, and trim that back down using a, a, a cutter staying, you know, sort of vertical. I'm going to use the uh, dividing head in two ways um, for this particular project. Firstly, I'm going to do some spiral milling because I need to turn basically that uh, into that. To do that, it's a matter of driving from the lead screw through gearing here to the, um, the chuck so that as the table moves, the, uh, the chuck is rotating. Now, I was asked, how do you do that? Okay. Every mill that's set up to do this, you can calculate what you call the lead of the, of the table. And what it is, is basically with a dividing head, there's a, there's a, a ratio, reduction ratio, generally it's 40 to 1. Uh, seems to be that commonly, but there are some exceptions. 
And so in order for this to do a full revolution, this has got to travel 40 times one revolution of the screw, and the screw here is five millimeters. And so this has got a 200 millimeter pitch. If I want to get something like that out of it, I need to work out how far that would go in one revolution. Uh, and th in this case, it's 80 something millimeters, 85, I think, or 84.9, something like that. And then work out the gear ratios using some tables, which can be found in the machinery's handbook, uh, how much I need to slow this down or speed this up, if this is the case, um, to, to give me that. So what's happening is that the cutter is actually staying still. And as this is feeding, it's, you know, it's, it's feeding uh, back while this thing is rotating this way. Okay. If I want to get this rotating the other way, produce the opposite spiral, I need to put an idler gear in here um, or take an idler gear out depending on what the, the, what the story is. But uh, that, that's basically it. It's not terribly complicated. And if you think about it, it's, it's the same sort of thing you do with a, a lathe lead screw uh, when you're screw cutting. You gear down the spindle, in this case, to make the lead screw turn a fraction of the spindle speed. Here you're gearing down the um, the, the spindle, the, the fourth axis here, um, to match the, the lead screw speed or what, what you need. So a couple of things you may or may not have picked up on. If I'm trying to get that edge so it's, it's radial, directly in line with the centre, I actually have to offset that cutter by half a cutter diameter. Now that's if I'm going straight ahead. Okay, and if I want to get that one radial too, when I come around, you know, if I, if I rotate that round, once I get about halfway, I need to shove that over so that the offset is on the opposite side to get that. Now, some people forget that, and so what, what you end up with, if you have that directly on the center line, um, you end up with a, with a vertical line there, which means that in overall terms, it's, it's not radial. In this case, because I'm putting a, an angle on here, 29 degrees, the contact, li line of contact with the cutter is actually that one there, which is, is 29 degrees. So a half inch cutter, uh, that point there is actually three millimeters above the center line, or this being a half inch cutter, uh, 3.35 down from the edge. So I've actually offset my Y so that I originally lined up the uh, the center of the cutter on the center of the part, and then I've offset that back a little bit so I get that line of contact basically vertical on the part. Why does that matter? Well, I want, if you can imagine an axis going up through this part, I want the plane that goes through that axis and intersects uh, this, this surface to be basically a right angle, right? Which you can see here uh, is. If I had that offset, I might get some dishing or something like that. So that's that's why I've I've taken care with that offset to get that so that perpendicular to the axis of the of the part of the of the bolt going through the part, it's going to be flat. I've now changed the uh, dividing head back into its more conventional form. Um, what, I what I'm now up to is putting the, the teeth on these parts. Now, they're the, they're the long parts, and then there's a short part, which uh, made pretty much the same way. It's just that the pocket is, is shallower. These ones I put a cut on to uh, give me clearance for the cutter to get in there. Uh, on these ones, um, I don't need to do that because the amount of, of cutting that I'm going to be doing is such that the, the cutter is only going to come in a um, quarter of an inch or something like that. So uh, that should be all right. Um, I've cleared the material away, not necessarily because I need to, it's just that it was a convenient thing to do and it helps me see what I'm doing. Here's the, uh, the first of the small pieces um, cut with the, with the steps. So the, 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 uh, the base of the cutter there is on the center line and I'm just feeding it uh, out through, indexing around by 5.8 degrees, 
uh, and moving along two millimeters, which is what the geometry says it should be. I had thought that I wasn't going to have to relieve the, the, the back end here, but I found that halfway through this, uh, it was just bogging the cutter up too much. So I came in with the angle grinder and just put a bit of uh, relief in there. And that's the nice thing about using this fixture. I haven't taken this out of the, uh, the chuck since um, setting this up. And so that locating pin, which is there, um, is, is in the same spot. So I can take this on, I can put this back on uh, after having relieved that a little bit and it's, it's still good. The cutter is, um, while I remember, is a 75 degree dovetail cutter. Uh, bought off eBay, came out of uh, China, seems to be doing the job. Um, and that gives me, that can, that'll, that'll give me a flat surface there and a 15 degree or a 75 degree, depending which way you want to measure it. Um, undercut. Now the reason that's important is that that way when this and the other one is stacked on top of each other they tend to wedge in. Uh, if you don't have that um, a decent knock and, and everything will, will come apart. Here are my two small pieces. Uh, I've actually recut these again because I made an error in the step distance there. I, I stepped down two millimeters. I should have done 1.37. Um, two millimeters is, is the total depth of the step but I'm if you, if you measure the peak to peak, that's only 1.37. So uh, fortunately I had enough material there I could recut. So that's where it was, that's where it now is. Um, and as you can see, that, that mesh is in there quite nicely. So I now have to cut the, uh, the larger versions. That'll sit on top of. The reason that I've got that left over and I haven't cleaned that up and all the rest of it is that I want to use the fixture I've got on the on the dividing head to hold those so I can come in with a cutter and and clean all this lot up uh, and so I need to to do that one of the last things I'll do with these is then take off uh, well I'll put a trench in there for a for a, a, a strip clamp but also take off some edges here I've put my fixture up on the rotary table now um, just to, to do the, the, the cleaning up here. I've nearly done this one. The reason for the rotary table is just that these lines here are radial and so uh, rather than muck around trying to get things lined up on the, the, um, the table here and then having to turn it a little bit to get that one, uh, I've opted to put it on the rotary table. Earlier I spoke about having to offset cutters. Now, if I want a nice radial line there, it means the cutter's got to be on this side of the line. When that turns around to get that nice radial line again, I've got to have the cutter offset in the, actual, uh, the opposite direction. So it's, it's something to remember when, when doing this sort of thing. Uh, you do have to uh, think about you know, where your offsets are. Here are the four finished parts. Um, what have I done since uh, since you saw the, the, the spiral milling? Well, on the large parts, uh, I've put a, a, a R16 radius in there and then joined that up. And I've also just sort of uh, flattened off the, the, the parts there, uh, the, what do you call it, the ramp, um, just to give it a, a, a square corner. The small parts, uh, done something similar there. I've also put two flats on there, uh, radius the front end, so that it'll actually sit inside there uh, and put a put a slot in there that will take a, uh, a standard strap clamp. I'm going to use a strap clamp to uh, hold these things down. So um, nothing terribly complicated there. With that material removed you can see how this thing works. It'll go from basically down here uh, right up to there. Uh, so I'm going to have a bit of fun playing with these things and seeing how good they are and uh, what, the, what they're going to do for me. This is what it comes down to. Here's a normal strap clamp. This is just a piece of uh, what's it, 40 by 75 or something like that. Uh, clamping that up, there's not a problem with a normal strap clamp, but when I put that here, that, that comes to, to 50, 54 uh, millimeters, whereas Using the bottom setting of the, uh, the spiral clamp here, I know that that's only 50 millimeters. So, you know, that's, I, I've just saved myself a little bit of space there. Now, this is the sort of the, 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 the lowest case, but when I start 
when I, when I clamp this this way, uh, I'm going to have to go have a longer strap, which is probably going to get a bit thicker, uh, and uh, it means it might have to set out a little bit more. This is the setup with uh, that's 70 millimeters, and uh, I mean that's just handy because that's the the maximum size of this. But you can see that this really isn't sticking out that way too much more than it was before. Uh, it's still around about the, the, the 45, 50 millimeter mark. Whereas here, uh, I've had to go up a size in uh, clamp block, I've had to go up a size in strap, and so this now sticks out close to 100 millimeters. So that's the sort of the advantage of this, is that, that it's, it's a bit more compact. The downside, I guess, is that here I've actually got a mechanical advantage of, you know, that distance to that distance, it's, it's probably about uh, two to one. So um, I'm getting more force out of this. Whereas here, I'm, I, I've, you know, from there to there to there to there is, is about the same. It's been a fun thing to make and um, a bit interesting. So um, I hope that inspires others and, uh, and we'll see you for the next one.